Hi, my name is Brittany Drakeford. I am originally from Prince George's County, Maryland, but I'm currently a graduate student at Wake Forest University in their Masters of Management program. Are we at a point in this country where we can say that we won? Um, I think we can say we negotiated very well. We've gained some things, but on the same hand, we also lost some things. We had integration, we got voting rights actually uh, secured, even though they were already ours because they were rights. Um, but we also lost some of the good teachers in black schools uh, in because of integration. We lost some of the economic uh, vitality of the black community because of integration. Um, there were there were some there were some trade offs, and we see those trade offs starting to play out now. Um, in some aspects, we've lost even credibility to fight for uh, black and Latino and African American issues because of well, there's a black president. You know, we've so we have we've won some things, but we've also still have some things to fight for. Um, there have been some major societal changes because of the civil rights movement, and I can't negate that, nor can I denounce it. Um, the fact that I'm sitting here um, ha and have I have the ability to attend Wake Forest University, that's one. You know, The fact that my parents and um, even I have the opportunity to work and to dream and to do whatever I want to do, um, that was as a result of the civil rights movement. Um, there's so, much, so many different things rural changes um, we've gained, especially my generation, that we were able to have because of the sacrifices that others have made. I don't have to worry about going down to South Carolina where my family's from and getting lynched. I don't have that fear. Um, I think, I don't really think that the shifts in cultural and social norms are what is necessarily um, affecting Barack Obama's uh, presidency. I don't think that's one of the primary reasons why he's struggling. It is a reason, but I don't think it's the primary reason. I think the primary reason why Barack Obama is struggling is because we, those who supported him and voted for him, aren't really being activated. We're not organizing to to help him get policies through. Um, we're, we're not there. And until we actually start a movement again, um, then he will continue to struggle. And that's one of the biggest things. We need some type of organizing, some type of movement going on. Right now, people are really, they're really hopeless. They're not listening. They don't think that anything's change, going to change. They put in so much work and they see these repeated cycles. But they have to be reassured that whenever they start working, and whenever they actually put some effort into the movement, that things will change. Um, I think that... The most important factor in the decision-making process today is definitely socioeconomics. That's the biggest one. Um, and to the Freedom 2 generation, even though to me, I tend not to judge or even make decisions based on those, but I think as a whole, our society is definitely moving more into it. It's all about money. Um, we discriminate now based on class. Um, they're poor. There are uh, less educated kids all over the United States who are poor. Um, so I think that's definitely the biggest issue. I don't think that we've moved into a post-racial society either. I think that's pretty crazy. I don't know how people even manage to get to that concept. Um, we still see uh, discrimination on the basis of race. Um, just look at the school systems. I live in, I'm from Prince George's County, Maryland, probably one of the most wealthiest counties of African Americans, yet the school system sucks. Uh, black students aren't being educated well. They have some of the highest uh, home foreclosure rates in the state of Maryland. And uh, we just have 13 homicides in 12 days. That's crazy uh, for African Americans who are making tons of money. So there's still some issues. Um, and there's still issues that are plaguing the United States on the basis of race uh, and class. And we need to address those issues. Uh, the fight for human dignity, I think, has long been traded in for the pursuit of privilege. Um, it's what's up there. Look at the media every day. 
uh, listen to what rappers are rapping about. I think that's one of your biggest indicators. Uh, rappers were used to be like the, the journalist of the black neighborhood because uh, prior to like the 70s, I think that the uh, the fight for human dignity for some has long been traded in for privilege, for the pursuit of privilege. Uh, for me, one of the biggest indicators is music, right? Rap music, hip hop. Um, hip hop was once considered like the hip hoppers or <laughs> rappers were considered the journalists of the black community because they were going into, they were reporting on some of the issues that were happening uh, where that weren't being told in the news. So this is like the actual outlet for uh, African Americans. Um, in 1968, when the Kerner Commissioner's report was released, they talked about how blacks didn't have a strong role in the media um, as far as being news reporters and all that stuff. And so that's what, in some ways, that's what the rapper's perspective was. That's what they were supposed to be doing. And they were, you have Public Enemy, you know, De La Soul, some of these different groups, even Tupac. And they were talking about these issues that were happening in their communities and then putting them on this, in a platform, in a media platform for the entire world to see. And they were talking about Brenda has a baby and fighting the power and different things like that. Now, <laughs> what are rappers talking about? Not all of them, but in on the radio, you hear most of them talking about having sex, getting high, drinking, um, and that those types of things. So I think it has been traded in, um, definitely. Um, I don't think that we've desensitized my generation to uh, issues regarding race, gender, sexual orientation, and class. I think we've actually made, made my generation pretty aware of it. The next generation that's behind me, I think that they're going to be desensitized to those issues and not in a good way um and yeah and not in a good way but I definitely think that we my generation we, we're acknowledging differences we're becoming more tolerant of others and we're also trying to figure out ways to work through some of the different racial barriers um now for everyone this isn't true but that's how all groups are um, because of technology, I definitely think that we view social justice issues more on a global level. How is it that we can get everybody connected um, to actually start spreading the word and talking about what's going on? Um, and that's you definitely see that all over. Um, sometimes in my parents' generation, they would talk about social justice issues in regards to police brutality, you know, or maybe... Um, not being able to go to school with whites. But I see my generation looking at social justice issues uh, even in a, in a way, in a way larger sense. <laughs> uh, we see it in terms of where, where is it that you're living? Uh, why is it that you live there? How close do you live to a power plant? How is that power plant affecting your health? Is it fair that you live next to a landfill why did they build the landfill there? And so these are all issues that my generation looks at into social justice issues. Um, being a part of a generation where I'm expected to live diversity in a world where others are still struggling to uh, to admit that there is diversity, it's kind of interesting. On one hand, I enjoy it because it allows me to be a teacher. I can tell my father, like, you're wrong. <laughs> Or in most instances, he would tell me, no, Brittany, you're wrong. So that's definitely one of the positives of it, is to be able to take the knowledge that I've acquired from my friends of different ethnic backgrounds and different economic backgrounds and different sexual orientations, and to then be able to help others, especially older people, become more tolerant. 